fucking first cut. Golly! Welcome to the First Cut Podcast. I'm Rick Gaiman, and this is your round one recap for this week's Genesis Invitational. Joining me to break it all down, Kyle Porter is here, and KP, we have a lot to talk about. We do. It was it was a uh, it was kind of like I, I thought Tiger Shank on 18 kind of summed up the day. You're like, there's a there's a lot going on, you know, with a lot of different guys, and I think for for a tournament that has lost a lot between Rom and Neiman and DJ and you know everything that's gone on with Liv. There was a ton happening on Thursday. A stone cold hosel and then one of the best recovery shots you'll ever see from the big cat. Let's start right there. He went out in the early wave. It was definitely getting more difficult as the afternoon went on. Winds started to roll in, but Tiger was part of that morning group. And I was thinking, KP, man, when's the last time Scotty Scheffler and Rory McIlroy have played in front of basically zero fans? Because they were all following this guy. Yeah, it's. I mean... Usually one of those guys is with him, right? Um, yeah, they they were all following him. And I thought, God, his first hole, you're like, oh, wow. You know, he gets up and down from, I think he got a flyer out of that, that right rough, gets up and down for birdie. And you're like, okay. And he just, it, you know, I, I, I thought the weirdest stat for him on Thursday, Rick, and I don't, you probably noticed this, but five or, uh, yeah, five under, on the par fives and par threes and six over on the par fours. And that's, I would say probably unusual for him historically, just because I obviously he, he's played always played par fives very well, but he doesn't make that many mistakes on par fours. Hey, he, his short, he kept blaming his short game and his speeds and everything. And it's like, man, you left your yourself in some terrible positions, like on 10, and you know multiple other places where you were in bunkers so i just i you can blame it on the short game but you got to look at his approach play as well well he wouldn't have had to lean on the short game as much if he hit better second shots that was my big takeaway because when yeah. i saw him on tuesday i thought his distance control looked really good and i thought it you know i was like oh wow this is this is better than i was expecting he was hitting a lot of things pin high he was hitting a lot of greens and he makes a bad bogey out of the middle of the fairway immediately on two i mean he hit he had a shot on on three he drew a great lie in the right rough on three and and landed it was like 15 yards short i mean it was just he did not help himself and i i agree with you i think a lot of the troubles were the second shot and then of course um he he throws in a shank a literal shank on 18. yeah yeah it's a it's a hard place to scramble right you know scheffler did this a little bit on the back nine in his round on thursday we'll, we'll probably talk about him in a minute but you just you start to can't happen to can't happen to rory you know you start you start giving yourself a lot of scrambling um or, or you put yourself in the wrong spot. This is why Riviera is great. You put yourself in the wrong spots and you're like, wow, I just made a seven. Max Elman makes seven from the middle of the fairway on two on, on Thursday. And so I think, yeah, the short game numbers were not very good for Tiger, but I'm with you. It, it was, it was, it was bad approach play and it was a lot of distance control. We talked afterwards about how adrenaline affects that, but it was like, man, everything was short, right? Like, the shots you mentioned, I'm trying to think. I think back nine, there were uh, maybe I think he was in the bunker uh, on 16. 12, 12, he came out of the rough, but he left he left that short. Um, 14, he hit the green. 15, he was short. Uh, 16 was below the hole. That was fine. That's and then right. 18, 18 was the shank. So, yes, his miss. I don't think he missed anything long. He yeah, missed uh, one. Most, he missed one long. Okay, and mostly, mostly short. Yeah, so I thought it was fine. I mean, I, again, like – you and I've talked about this a bunch. Like, what, what are our expectations? We think he's going to compete with Scotty Shuffler and and uh, you know Morikawa and JT and these guys. I guess he did he beat JT on Thursday. <laughs> well, there are some big names who are below him on the leaderboard, but uh, that that's you know not necessarily Tiger beating them and those guys those guys beating themselves. When when the dust settled, KP, it was a one over seventy two. As of right now, there's a couple guys finishing up on the golf course, but basically everybody's done. It's T forty nine. Uh, this is 
Top 50 in ties plus anybody within 10 shots. The lead is at seven under, so he's eight shots back. So if uh, if it stayed like this, he would get to the weekends. But I guess there is a chance that if things go sideways on Friday, we do not see him on Saturday. Yeah, I, I would expect – here's the problem. I would expect something better. I think he could be because the swing looks good. I mean, he he had that he had the right miss off the tee early, and you're like, oh, that's not, you know, that's not great. But he he kind of fixed it, and I thought he like swung it very well. I think he'll figure out some of the distance control stuff on Friday. Uh, the problem is like his ceiling is just to me, Rick. It's very low, right? Like. How confident are you that Tiger has a 64 in him right now? So, so okay, I'm glad you said that. And I don't have I don't have evidence of this, but from what I feel like in the last however many rounds I've seen of Tiger in the various stages of comebacks, is he does not make birdies at a high enough rate like the rest of these guys do. So when you're gonna only gonna make four, maybe five birdies around, that's what he made on on Thursday. You gotta be, you can't be giving it back with four or five or six bogeys, which is he he's very it's so hard for him to make birdies and so easy for him to make bogeys. It's you know, uh, a little bit of distance control here, it's a bad chip there. There's two, but it's just like he doesn't make enough birdies to offset these rust induced mistakes, yeah. And then he doesn't play enough to it, it's it's very like circular. He doesn't play enough to get rid of the rust and he does, you know, like you just get into this circular argument basically. Um, so to answer your question, like, is he, is he to shoot a 60, is he going to shoot a bogey free seven under 64? No, I'd be, I'd be stunned at that. He, I think he would be stunned by that. Right. Like he, he could go out. Let's say it's crazy at where's the open this year. Troon. Uh, Yes. Let's say it's like crazy weather and it's windy and it, and like he could go shoot 71 and be one of the best rounds of the day. And you're like, yeah, okay. Like right. he kind of made a bunch of pars and only made a couple bogeys, had that crazy eagle or whatever. But like to shoot 64 at Riv, it's just it, like it's just not going to happen. And so if that's the case, then you're just you, – you're just not really you can't really get into it you can't really get in the mix you know which is which is a bummer last thing on tiger and i'm sure we'll talk plenty about him tomorrow as well uh the walk looks as good as we've seen it in a year yeah right but which is nice to see the thing that i've been worried about happened on thursday it was his back right yeah he, he blamed that he was <laughs> I, I the next time i shank one you know i'm blaming it on for him. sure yes but Absolutely. he said he was having back spasms all day, and on that downswing, it, it got him on 18. I bet it did. Uh, <laughs> I've been I've been concerned about the back. Here's the here's the hosel. Yeah, because it, everybody's like, oh, the legs better, the ankles better, you know, all this stuff, and it's like, yo, his his spine is fused together. Like we don't, it, I just feel like we don't really ever talk about it anymore because something has taken has taken precedent over that. So. Uh, I think it's a massive concern uh, when you look at the macro for him and apparently the micro too. So no pun intended, micro, micro dissectomy or whatever it's called. What's that's, it called? That's a pretty deep cut pun. Uh, micro di discotum. I don't know. Whatever. You're, you're what is the producer, Josh? Then I'll get. Uh, I'm going to bounce around here, Josh. So let's let's do this. The man that Tiger Woods and everyone is chasing is Patrick Cantlay. He also went out in the morning, and this was stellar. I mean, he got on a run. He had this thing at eight under through 14. He was making birdies left and right. He was making putts left and right. He did make what, what ended up being a really good bogey on 16 after clipping that old dead tree that sits over there and then dumping it in the bunker and then hitting a great bunker shot to to get out of there with with just a bogey but he is going to sit atop the leaderboard at seven under with a 64 heading into round number two yeah i mean it looks like he's gonna shoot 60 he's eight under through 14 and then he hit his last four holes were kind of a circus i mean he hits the tree on 16 he hit like two or three spectator or, or uh people in the gallery <laughs> yeah he did it was it was it was why I thought the four on 16 was kind of sick. 
Yeah. So he hits he, his first shot. This hole is 166 yards. His first shot is 50 yards short. It's a par three because he hits the trade drop straight down. He dumps the next one into the bunker. Then he stuffs that to like six inches and taps it in, which yeah, is awesome. Yeah, he, he almost made it out of the bunker. So he was good. You know, it was interesting. I was writing the recap before I got on and <clears throat> it, it like writing that reminded me he's been in the mix at kind of the last few events that he's played on Thursday. Uh, right. Farmers. I think he started on the north, so that was a little a little different. Uh, and then Pebble, he played very well on Thursday. So, you know, it, it's a golf course. He's played great at Riv. Uh, I think he's got five top 20s in his last six starts there. Uh, so for me, it's like, okay, just can you close? That's that's the question. I know you're great. I know, I know you have 64s in you, uh, unlike Tiger. But are you going to go win a, a, a big boy tournament early in the year? I, I think that's that's the only question for me with Cantlay. Since the start of 2024, his four, uh, and I guess probably now five best rounds, are all his round ones. Yeah. Okay. So Century, he gained nearly three strokes. How about this, though? So American Express, he gains four strokes in round one. He gives a lot of that back, and then some in round four. He loses seven. At the Farmers, he gains four and a half in round one, loses in two, three, and four. Mm -hmm. Pebble Beach gains six in round one, loses in two and three. Those are the only rounds they played. So, th yeah, he has he's destroyed round one. Yeah. I, I, producer Josh just said it well in our chat. He said, I'd just shoot two under tomorrow, you know? And I think that... I think that's right. It's like, you don't, you don't have to shoot another 64. Just don't shoot a 74. And that's what he's been doing. So he will have the lead going into the weekend. A couple of early guys who were uh, playing well, chasing him down. Let's go to Jordan Spieth, who seems to always play well on Thursdays uh, too. A five under 66 out in 30. Made another birdie at 11 KP. He did give one back coming in, but we're seeing a lot of... It's not necessarily more accurate driving Jordan Spieth, but it's better. Like he's like he's hitting it farther. He's 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 not losing as many strokes. The second shot's pretty good. His short game's pretty stout. It was, it was. I'll take this from Jordan. Yeah. Day. Well, you 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 nailed it. I think it's sort of when he was at his at his best. This was the profile. Was kind of a zero driver. Maybe yes. a little better than that. And then you score with everything else. I don't know what to do with this card though, Rick. It it's it's uh, so chaos free that I'm not even sure like how to, how to talk about it. I know at no point did he make a double or worse at no point. Did he have consecutive bogeys? Um, he only, he made back-to-back -back birdies twice, but this is about as calm. This is the lazy river of Jordan Spieth rounds. Yeah. Which, you know, he, he's somebody that he hasn't played Riv as well as Cantley recently. Uh, he was good or very early in his career, really good at Riv. And he's talked about, I think he called Riv his favorite American course or something one time. Like oh, really? if he only had one course to play, it would be Riviera. So uh, he's, you know, this is a, this is a really, I'm really intrigued by him over the next three days because, you know, you start to talk about the masters and the majors and, and everything upcoming. And it's like, Man, if Spieth wins Riviera, that hype is going to be off the charts. I, I think, I think I said this to you. I don't know if I texted this to you or I said this to you at some point. Just any Spieth win from January first till the Masters, I don't care what it is or where it is, gets yeah. you on another level. Well, I, I agree, and I think even more so here, right? Because it's it's such a facsimile for Augusta, and you know, it, um, his history at Augusta, it just. It, I think that starts to get, I, I think a speed win this week would kind of rock after, after the, you know, if you're the PGA tour, the start hasn't been good. You can point to depth or parody or whatever you want, but when your winners are, you know, Matthew Pavon, Chris Kirk, Grayson Murray, no offense to those guys. That's you, you want to speed win at Riviera. Before we go to the afternoon wave, um, how worried should the Americans be about the President's Cup? <laughs> Cam Davis, six under sixty-five. Jason Day, six Nick under Taylor. sixty-five. The Canadians are yeah. nuts. Canadian. Adam Spenson, four under today. Benny on. Benny on. Yes, sixty-seven. I mean, maybe some strife in the American locker room. Who knows? I, I, I smell an upset.
I, I love it. Bring it on. I, I want I want the uh yeah, I hope they do get upset. That would be great. Because it would just it would yeah. I mean they, they might get upset. I hope they do. That would be sick if they did. I would kind of I would kind of love it. Yeah, because it would provide even more just fodder for for uh for Ryder Cup and for and it would it would it would actually bring some juice to the president's cup that maybe it hasn't had it's also very it's also february don't worry about that part much needed much needed juice for the president's cup okay we are going to talk about uh some big notables who may or may not be towards the bottom of the leaderboard we will check out the betting favorites and much more but we're first we're going to take a quick break and hear a word from our partners Tiger Woods makes his first PGA Tour appearance of 2024, headlining a fantastic field at the Genesis Invitational this weekend on CBS. Okay, KP, the return of Will Zalatoris is in full effect. He yeah. went out today in 29, six under through nine holes. He played his second nine at one over, but he is still going to post a five under 66, two shots off the lead. And this is, you know, we've statistically seen him knock off the rust over the past couple of weeks and past couple of starts. And this type of golf course, a golf course that could host a major championship tomorrow is a good spot for Will Zalatoris. Well, that, that's, that was going to be my take. Does he, does he only play well at hard courses? <sighs> I just think hard courses just, they let him and Scotty Scheffler and Rory McIlroy. They just there's so many ways for them to beat you there. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, it was good to see. You know, I we we talked about him earlier in the year of like, hey, let's give it some time to breathe. Let's get it to April and and kind of assess where he's at. I, he'll be disappointed by making pars at the par fives on the back, but yeah, he was really good, and uh, that's exciting because he is he's been awesome at majors over the course of his career. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he's somebody again, who it, it's a little, like can't, you mentioned Rory and Scheffler, but it's a little, like can't lay where it's like, man, Riv set, sets up really well for somebody who, who, who hits his irons, like, like Will Zalatoris. Scotty Scheffler played in the afternoon. It was a three under 68 and, uh, we've already recorded something for this situation. Scotty Scheffler back at it again. He was phenomenal from tee to green, but struggled with the putter. But no surprise, he's in contention for a victory. Evergreen. I recorded that like a year ago. Yeah, same same thing. It just pulled my string. You pull it, my it, string. That's what I say. <laughs> so a couple of things. Uh, well, I don't even like you just said it. He was for first. I mean, we, we, we could I could have written it's a Mad Lib. I don't need to know where he is. You don't even have to give me a number on T to green. I know, I know he was first. I just need a number on putting. Was he last or was he third to last? Was he fifth to last? Fourth to last. There you go. <laughs> that's that's the only number that I need to fill to fill in. And then I need to know, like, I have to fill in what he shot. I mean, his 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 round recaps are just a a, a total mad lib. And I think the interesting part, Rick, is I don't know how much of of his round you saw. He was frustrated. Like he was pissed about as frustrated as Scotty Scheffler gets. He 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 chucked a golf ball into yeah. the abyss and he did like a couple of like putter drops, hand on knees, the the famous like <laughs> he does that a lot. Situation. <laughs> he, do, does it feel to you when he's over the not when he's over the ball, but after he hits it, it's almost like he's bending his body to try to get it to go in the hole. Have you noticed that? No. Like he 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 he, he, he looks like he is hoping that the ball goes in, and not confident that he he just looks like he doesn't know where it's going, which is is crazy. It's also probably true, right? <laughs> I mean, but he's hitting it like it would be different if he was hitting it like even a Zalatoris. He's hitting it like freaking Ben Hogan. So uh, I'm about to. Uh, I'm going to tweet this out when the round's over because I got to wait for it to, the uh, numbers to finish. But these are just so he he made an eagle and four birdies. He shot a 68. He has four shots off the lead. He's in a tie for 10th. These are birdie putts that he missed, not 
Not the three footer for par that he missed. These are birdie putts that he missed. 27 feet, 22 feet. I give him best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nine feet, seven inches, eight feet, five inches, five feet, nine inches, five feet, five inches, three feet, five inches. Those are just the birdie putts that he missed. He he had, you could probably guess this because we both looked up the same numbers. He had 10 looks for birdie inside of 15 feet. At which one of to them. be do it and he made one uh he made well that in, sorry that includes the eagle that he made from off the green on one okay so i think it includes i think he made like three of those out of 10 or so, something like that maybe maybe four i mean it's just like i i tweeted this it feels like every shot he hits is seven feet it's it's actually it's actually disgusting. And he hits it on sides of pins that nobody, like it's, it is when he, so he hit back to back, uh, he had back to back left misses, I think on 12 and 13 or 11 and 12. And I was ready to like, it has the world ended. I've <laughs> never seen two consecutive Scotty Scheffler double crosses in my entire life. Yeah. He, that was the part where he was scrambling like 13 through 16, I think. But Guy, he had an approach on, I think it was eight that was like on the right side, like on the right hand side of, of eight. Yes. And it kind of came back and you're like, God, that is like, it's just like where you want to hit it, you know? And eight's like, it's so hard. It's, he, I just, you know, oh, it's, he's, he's so good. He's so, so, so good. And it, and it's, the discourse is weird because the average, like my dad, the average fan, it's like, well, he doesn't win. And you're like, yeah, I, like, listen, I, I, I know, <laughs> but like, hear me when I'm telling you that we haven't, this is, this is like a, a tip. This is historic on both sides, right? Yes. That's it's, cool. it's, it's, it's historically great and historically bad. At the same yeah. Time. It's crazy. It's like, it's, it's kind of like what I think. It's kind of like Rory has been at times in his career where you're like, oh, if you can make a putt. Rory's a good putter broadly, but there's been these these stretches, these seasons where you're. That's what this feels like, but it's like further in each direction. Right. It's it's wild. I I mean, I uh, he's my one and done. So I'm <laughs> hopefully he'll make something. Yeah. You and me both. So we're we're rooting for him. You were like, well, how many did you see his round? I'm like, I watched every free. <laughs> <laughs> so invested in this guy this I'm week. A speed top 20. So I'm I'm I feel well, I never feel good with speed, but I feel something. Uh speaking of Rory McElroy. Oh. This has happened a couple of times recently, or at least this is the second time. Goes out. In two under makes birdie at 10. So he is three under through 10. I will remind everyone that three under right now is a tie for 10th. Now the back nine does get significantly more difficult. He played in the afternoon wave into a wind, which was just the hardest part of the course, the hardest time of day. But he made a uh, par on 11, which is a par five. He bogeyed 12. He doubled 15. He tripled 16. He birdied 17 and he bogeyed 18. That is a three over 74. And he is right on the number, 10 shots off the lead, where if he were to drop farther than this tomorrow, he would actually miss this cut. That would not be good. Uh, I don't I don't know what's going on. You know, he I I I thought Pebble was kind of a outlier because he played so well to start the year and his last two years have been extraordinary. I mean, just really, really consistently great. And uh, he started the front nine was was pretty solid, hit it good, made birdie on one, did what you need to do. But man, I, I don't is it is it mentally like is it a mental thing? I hate to like try to get into these guys brains, but you know, last week it was the had to take a drop and then he took the wrong drop and things went sideways after that. This today, um, I mean, he was greenside on 11 in two mm -hmm. and he had a four foot eight inch putt for birdie missed that and then went on the run of really sour play and to make a triple on 16 which is a par three uh 
obviously not great. So I don't know if that, if that just like, I hate to say something's mental and try to diagnose these guys, especially some of the best in the world. But I do wonder if these moments are starting momentum in the wrong direction. I think one thing that'll be interesting this year, Rick, this is, I'm not speaking about today really, but just broadly is people are like, Oh, he's, he's no longer on the, on the uh, PGA tour board. Like he's freed up to play some great golf. And, and if you look at it, He's been playing great golf for the last two years. And I think that one thing that's really interesting about Rory is I think that he is so extrinsically motivated by things. And I'm actually curious to see if, if things, I'm not saying that this is what is happening based on one round or two rounds, Pebble and Riviera, but I'm interested broadly in 2024 to see if it goes the other way. And he like, doesn't have the live PGA tour thing going on. And maybe the place slips a little bit. Might not happen. I hope it doesn't happen. I hope he's great throughout the year. But I'm 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 intrigued by that. I'm interested by that. Do we need to start sending him anonymous letters about him stinking and he can't get <laughs> his and like <laughs> try to bait him into some good play? Just burner email accounts. <laughs> That'd be sick. <laughs> uh kp there was a lot of guys in the field they did a lot of things that could be a recap max homa uh grinded back he's he's too over but is there anything else that we should chat about we're gonna get 18 obviously tomorrow we're gonna make a cut who knows how many guys that's going to be but um lots of storylines lots of different ways this can play out yeah uh there's not uh, i want to see the the odds because i noticed that the books are a little worried about uh mr ludwig Give me, give me the odds, Josh. Let's see what we got here. Oh, okay. Can't lay your favorite. No surprise. 3.3 to one. Scotty six to one. Spieth is 10. Jason day, 11 to one. Cam Davis, 12. Zalatoris is 14. Ludwig, who is three under. Yeah. Uh, just kind of lurking. 16 to one. Luke list is 20 to one. Ludwig, uh, ninth in the field in approach play. 25th mm. off the tee. Didn't even really drive it his best he's a i've said this a thousand times what a huge problem no oh, he's a problem for sure big 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 problem i think it, it, you know i think to start the year like the expectations got so so big and it was a little unfair it's like oh is he the best player in the world and you're like okay well, let's, let's <laughs> chill like he was playing the thunderbird classic this time last year for tech for texas tech you know and I think as he starts to settle into the season, he is a problem. And uh, I don't know. I'm interested to see what he does uh, over the course of the of the rest of the week. He's. I think I saw. Oh, Justin Ray tweeted. Since uh, I'm going to get it wrong, but I think since he turned pro, the top three scoring averages in the world on the PGA Tour are Scotty, Rory, and Ludwig. Yeah, very good group to be in. Yes, that's that's sick. I don't know if it's because I would benefit greatly, but I think Scotty's going to win. <laughs> I hope he does. Uh, I, I I would rather have. I'll say this: I'd rather have Scotty at six to one than Cantlay at 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 three and a half or whatever three to one. Wasn't Scotty six to one before the tournament started, or maybe it was eight to one? Mm, he was close. Yeah, I think he's plus six fifty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Um, so after what I saw today, where he got the uh, the worst end of the draw and had a billion putts, makeable putts for birdie. Yeah, I'll but the, the problem is like that's not an like what he did today is just sort of what it is. Right. So I know I'm gonna get that again. I'm, I'm gonna get that three more times and I'll take my chances. Yeah. So I guess if you shoot four sixty eights, you're saying like you probably probably win. Yeah, and like can he can he make two of those two more one day and shoot like a 66 and two more 68s and win. I mean, like, yes. <laughs> okay. Then let's, then let's end this thing right now. I think, I think Scotty's floor and tiger ceiling are the same number. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. Speaking of tiger, do you want to discuss the fact that no one understands what, what was going on in that Gary Woodland tiger woods tweet? Oh, I, I probably didn't present it that well, but Tiger. Okay. So I don't know if we have the, the picture, Josh, but basically Woodland was looking in JT's bag to see what JT was hitting on a par three. That happens. As far as I understand the rules, that's not like 
it's not really breaking a rule. It's it's, it's not a rule to look in the bag and it happened, and which I hundred percent, I that's for, that's true, and it happens on every single part three on the PGA Tour. Right. That's part one. So part two is that Tiger put a number down next to his hip, yeah, which is I think a seven, eight. Yeah. So three down is an eight, which. So everything starts because you have to do everything one handed. So everything starts with a five. So three down off of five is eight. So two down would be seven. One down would be six. So there's Tiger flashing three down, which is an eight iron. And then like seven seconds later, it comes up on the graphic. JT's hitting an eight iron. Yeah. So I think to give Tiger, if you want to give Tiger the benefit of the doubt here. Yeah, there's Wilden looking in the back and Tiger looking in the no back. No problem. Which, with whatever. To give Tiger the benefit of the doubt, he might have been signaling to the TV person. Zero no? chance. Why would Tiger Woods, in the midst of competition, be making sure that the television spotter can accurately describe what club JT is in? That's Bones' job. That's Bones' job. No player should ever do that, and Tiger would definitely never do that. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt because he is like Tiger in terms of on course stuff is, is very old. Like he, he's, he, he's very different than Brooks. Why, why is Gary Woodland always involved? In he's always the recipient. Everybody loves giving club info to Gary. <laughs> I mean, I, he seems like a cool guy and <laughs> nice and everything, but he's always just wound up in the middle of these. Uh, yeah, it was, it wasn't. It wasn't great. It wasn't a great thing. I think it was just, I'm going to put this, like, I'm not really telling Gary. I'm not really telling anybody. I'm just going to put this down. If you know, you know, and we're all, and it's not going to be a big deal. And I don't really care either way. But, like, if we're going to care that Brooks did it to Gary at the right. Masters and Augusta National, like, had to release a statement about it, <laughs> then we're then we're going to have to care that Tiger flashed the eight iron to everyone. I Yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm with you, uh, it, but yeah, nobody understood like what some people finally understood and they're like, oh, you're like, yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. But everybody was like, oh, you, you've never been around golf before. I was like, uh, like everybody looks in the bag like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going. Look at the yeah, next photo. Yeah. Exactly. I, exactly. I, I was watching on TV and as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh my God, that's an eight iron. And yes. then they popped the graphic up and I was like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, fun day. Looking forward to the rest of the week. All right. Uh, we will be back Friday, Saturday, Sunday for the rest of the Genesis Invitational. Big thanks to producer Josh who does all the hard work behind the scenes. Kyle Porter is available online at Kyle Porter CBS. You can find me at Rick Run Good. This has been the first cut. We'll catch you next time.